Hey guys, Micah here from ebikeschool.com, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make your own do-it-yourself battery enclosure, like the one I made here. Now these steps will be great if you need to make an enclosure for batteries on your electric skateboard, or maybe for an electric bicycle, like that electric bicycle that just went by that I did not plan, but that worked out well, or for anything you need to make a custom enclosure for. All right, now let's see the instructions and see how I made this do-it-yourself enclosure. The underside of my board used to look like this, with everything just velcroed and taped down. But now I'm making an enclosure to cover and protect all of these parts. I started by making a wooden mold that was a bit bigger than my battery, speed controller, and all the buttons and switches that I wanted inside the enclosure. If you have a CNC, it'll be a lot easier to make cool shapes. But I don't have a CNC, I have a Swedish carving knife, so I just made a simple rounded block. Next, I figured out where I wanted the enclosure to sit on my board, and then I covered that area with duct tape so my fiberglass enclosure wouldn't stick to the board. I used hot glue to secure the mold in place, and then I rubbed wax all over it to make it easier to pull the fiberglass off afterwards. If you have mold release wax, that would be best. I had cutting board wax, which was almost as good. Next, I measured out my resin and hardener. Follow whatever the instructions on your resin say. Mine was 10 drops of hardener for every one ounce of resin, and I used about four ounces of resin total or a quarter of this can. Don't forget to mix it really well. Then I covered my mold with resin, making sure it was evenly coated, and laid down my first layer of fiberglass cloth. I then spread more resin on top of the fiberglass cloth, working it into the fabric, then added another layer. Basically, you just repeat this process of painting on resin and adding more layers of cloth to build up as many layers as you need to give your enclosure good structural rigidity. The instructions said to wait at least two hours, but it was a bit cooler out, so I waited a day, and then I sanded the rough edges down. Getting the mold off was a bit tricky with all that duct tape, but it eventually came off. It was a little more tricky to get the mold out of the shell, since I had one area where the resin had actually adhered to the wood. I guess I missed that spot with the wax. But with a little persuasion, I was able to get the wooden block out. This is the first point where you actually get a feeling that you're on the right track to making an enclosure, which is a nice and reassuring feeling, I have to admit. Next, I used a Dremel cutoff wheel to remove the extra fiberglass on the edges, leaving a lip large enough to screw the enclosure to my board, and then I sanded that edge smooth. At this point, I confirmed the structural integrity of the enclosure with the scientific method of smacking it around a bit and rolling it on the table. It checks out. Excellent. Next, I used some scrap fiberglass that I cut off in the previous step to test how large of a hole I'd need for my buttons and my charge port. Turns out 12 millimeters. I used a step drill to make these holes in the sides of the enclosure, and I used a Dremel to cut out the holes for two on-off switches that I'll run in parallel. Now it came time to paint. I originally intended to paint the enclosure black, but I didn't have enough black to do the whole thing, so I painted it a green color, similar to the green on the bottom of my board. But then I realized that the board has some red and black in it too, so I decided to try out a speckled, sort of distressed look by adding black and red overspray. Then I quickly realized that was a terrible idea, because now it looked like someone ate glass and threw up on my board, but by this point I was already committed. While the paint was drying, I decided to remove my trucks and change them from drop-through to top mount in order to increase my ground clearance a bit due to the enclosure being sort of thick. I don't build batteries that are two cells thick anymore, now I make them one cell thick, so I don't have an issue with ground clearance or big enclosures anymore. To mount the enclosure, I drilled holes all the way around the flange of the enclosure. I added my parallel on-off switches on one side of the enclosure, and then I added my charging port and my buttons on the other side. The on-off rocker switch came with waterproof covers, so I added those too. Then I marked where these holes lined up on the board and drilled blind pilot holes that went almost all the way through the board. Next I connected all of my buttons, switches, and the charging port, then lined up the enclosure on the board. Finally, I used wood screws to hold the enclosure down to the board. You can add a waterproof gasket here, cut from foam if you'd like. And lastly, the moment of truth. I flip my board over, and the ground clearance looks good. And now I've got my very own custom do-it-yourself battery enclosure. Now I hope you guys found that video helpful, and that it will help you if you're going to be making your own do-it-yourself enclosure. Now while I have you here, I just want to tell you about one more cool thing. Uh, I've recently started helping my sister with her online store, electricskateboardparts.com. 
So if you guys are looking for a source in the United States for electric skateboard parts, whether it's you know all the parts on this kit here, uh, the hub motors, the controller, uh, you know the wheels, trucks, anything, as well as my own custom designed uh, flat electric skateboard battery packs, that's all there on electricskateboardparts.com. So you know it'd be awesome if you guys uh, check it out and help support her site. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Last but not least, it's time to announce the winner of the ebikeschool.com book giveaway. The uh, randomly selected commenter from my last video was... Kuda, who was a man of few words, but I appreciate the sentiment. So congratulations, Kuda. Send me a private message here on YouTube. Let me know which one of my books you'd like and where to send it. And then if anyone else wants to win a free copy of one of my books, either on building uh, electric bicycles, on building custom DIY lithium batteries, or on DIY solar power projects, all you have to do is put a comment in this video and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter in my next video. All right, thanks for watching everybody. See you next time.